Yeah, on your hip, you dodo, and look at it like you like it. I guess it doesn't. Pavel? I have to do one for all time's sake. Howdy, everyone. So I just got the kitchen installed in the van, and today's video is just gonna be kind of about my woodworking process and working with lightweight materials. Now this kitchen is about 36 inches tall, not including that little skinny tail section out there. It's about 60 inches this way, and coming out from the wall, it's about 17 and a half inches. And this thing weighs final weight on the kitchen. 32.22 pounds, right about 32 and a quarter pounds. And kind of ironically, the drawers to this thing actually weigh more than half of that. I'm gonna be showing some of the original footage I took that unfortunately is mostly in time-lapse form of you know the building the carcass of this thing. And I joke that that footage is like one haircut cycle old. Um, I look almost the same, but that footage is actually late last summer, kind of early fall when I was putting this cabinet together. And just with everything in life, it's taken me that long to kind of get around to stage two of how I do my van builds, which is, you know, initially I just build all my carcasses. I get them in here, get everything fitted. Everything gets pulled out. And then one piece at a time, I come back through and I do all the finish work. So that all happened late last summer, early fall that I got the carcass built. And now early April, we finally get the kitchen installed in its final version. What is really hard to capture up front is the design process. I know that there's the obvious, you know, like, oh, I need a kitchen, it's gonna be about this big. But when building lightweight, it gets really complicated because you really are always thinking about exactly how thin can you make each part and exactly how strong it needs to be and then how to reinforce it so it actually is strong. And then you've got other things to factor in, like where am I gonna run my plumbing? Where's my electrical gonna go? So all of that is just seamless as well as do I need to put any screws in for things like hinges? Um, and do I need to reinforce those parts so there's actually enough meat for the screws to go? And then even after I get a pretty good idea of how I'm gonna build this thing, I then end up struggling with exactly where to start. Each piece, like each wall or each horizontal has a lot of impact on the other parts of the cabinet. So you gotta start at one point and once that is fixed, then the rest of it kind of comes together. In this cabinet, I decided to start with the floor piece, which wraps around the water tank and wheel well. I'll eventually trim off part of this to kind of have better access for my plumbing to pass through, but for now it was just a starting point, and from there I could essentially start building upwards. As you watch this footage, sometimes I install a large panel first and then add all the little supports and support blocks to it, and sometimes I actually use those support blocks first and then come back and attach the thin panels to them. If you were just using solid, thicker plywood sheets, then each of these vertical pieces would essentially just be one shape to cut. But when you're trying to get away with using either quarter inch or even eighth inch vertical sheets, then you're basically in for an endless amount of what feels like gluing, shooting little brad nails, using some small clamps, and just working with all these tiny little blocks to assemble a strong structure. And with so many little pieces, I find I just have to adapt and improvise as I go. I can't just make a sketch that accounts for all these tiny little pieces, but I just kind of take it one part at a time and try to figure out how things will stack, how I can access where I need a glue, and eventually the whole thing comes together. And once this main carcass was built and it was test fit and I knew it would work, then it was essentially time to wait for its turn to get finished up, which finally has happened in the last couple weeks. Let's now talk about some of those like final details that took this cabinet from that carcass that I showed myself working on to what it is now, like this finished product. I think that finish work is uh, kind of unique for what I do. I'd like to kind of show you some of the hoops I jump through to kind of pull off the product that I'm happy with. One of the first concepts that I'm a big fan of is to try to do as much work while this thing is not installed as possible. I mean, it can be really exciting to kind of feel like you've got this kitchen done or you've got some big piece of furniture done and you just want to get it bolted in the van. It just feels like things are kind of coming together. But for me, if I can do as many of the small things as possible on the bench, then I'll spend less time down here on my knees or you know, making sawdust in the van as I finish up little cuts. So let me just quickly take you through some of the things that I do on the bench before I install this thing. So one of the things I like to try to do ahead of time is to just get everything kind of small drilled out that I need. So here I needed to pass this hose up my wall to come up to my faucet. Um, so, you know, just getting that drilled out as well as kind of this hole here so I can get these wires run out. These wires will actually end up coming through this hole, but that's not today. Um, then I've got these little reinforcement plates because I need some T-nuts here to secure another cabinet to it. So just like getting that stuff glued on. And then on the back side of the cabinet here, 
you know, I had pre-made this little panel here that essentially has some like plumbing parts and some electrical switches, as well as like just getting everything in place. So I could just like plug in all this plumbing stuff. And you know, there's a lot of this that you could have done afterwards, like, you know, cutting this hole even like for this electrical outlet. I think a lot of people will sort of do that stuff once it's installed. But for me, the less sawdust I make in here, you know, on the bench, I can rotate this cabinet cut this in the easiest manner possible. So it's just a lot easier for me to get all those details done, even though it's way more exciting to just get the cabinet bolted instead of having it sit on your bench for a couple extra days. But even more of a time saver than like doing plumbing stuff or electrical stuff, I think one of the best things you can do on the workbench is just lining up everything involving your drawers and like your doors. So unfortunately in this van, we're not actually using drawer slides. I think I've got some pretty good tricks there for some good alignment but I am using these latches that take a lot of precision. So let me just show you quickly how I do that to make it as painless as possible. All right, so I'm a big fan of these uh, Southco M1 2A latches. Uh, I wish they had a stainless version once in a while because for some really kind of fancier looking stuff, it's nice to have stainless. The chrome I think is pretty pukey, but I do like this black finish. Uh, the way these work is you just twist them in either direction and they open then they kind of slam to close. You don't have to do anything. And then you can kind of lock them out by pressing this. The kind of cool feature you may notice, even when this is recessed, this still goes up and down. There's a couple latches out on the market that once you lock it out like this, this doesn't move up and down. So if you accidentally lock your drawer when it's open and then go to slam it close, uh, it just make a thunk that uh, can kind of tear out the latch mechanism or it's not a, not a very good thing when it happens. So anyways, I really like these latches. And then you can get a spec sheet like this to line them out. And the two numbers that I think are critical if you get one of these are you need this latch plate to be exactly 42 and a half millimeters back from the kind of the front of the cabinet. And then you need from wherever this latch plate mounts, you need to be 30.3 millimeters down to the center of the latch mechanism. So those are pretty uh, precise measurements. And what I like to do is just make little out of a uh, little, little super glue and some random scraps of plywood, I'll make little templates like this. So on this one, for instance, if you look at this, this surface right here is represented by what would touch here. And then we need that 30.3 millimeters. So if we get our ruler out from the top here, we're essentially right at that 30.3 millimeters. So then when I'm working on the cabinet, I can essentially take that, butt it up like this, and then with a little I'm gonna make a little mark right here where I need the center of that hole to be using this thing. And then I build kind of a similar looking thing that looks like this. And the way this works is to get that 42 and a half millimeter back. This is actually already adjusted for the thickness of my face frame. Because if you remember, there's no face frame here yet, but then I'll end up taking this and I can butt it up like that, mark the holes from underneath when the drawers are out. And that way I've got my like exact spacing I need for these two holes to mount this little latch plate right here. So that's just something quick you can do is grab some scraps, some super glue, and then you only once have to measure and make sure this is perfectly spaced. And then you can just go through the whole cabinet and uh, get everything that lined up nicely. And then once you've got your hole locations marked, it's a pretty painless process to pre-drill the holes for the latch plates, as well as drill out the full size holes for the latch mechanism. And finally, I'd like to talk about the front of this cabinet, um, which in all my woodworking projects, you know, from stuff I do at home to even like this picture of a van that I built, I think eight years ago is one of the first vans I've built for a customer. Um, I really tried to implement like the concept of continuous grain and just having just like big solid kind of sheets of wood, not looking like a bunch of cut up little boards, just like really having that continuous grain across my cabinet. And as I've tried to combine that with lightweight woodworking, I've gone away from using solid wood for a lot of these projects and actually just using veneered panels is something that I've kind of started doing. So in this van, I've got this sheet of plywood I essentially veneered. It was an eighth inch sheet of plywood that I've put this curly maple veneer on. And then I've used these black or darker lines to kind of give a geometric look, which I think will match some of those veneered wedge shapes I have on the side of my other cabinets, kind of get this like geometric theme throughout the van. One of the cool things about running these black lines is I purposely did it in a way where I have no seams between uh, these maple sheets. Each like section of maple you see is just one continuous piece of veneer with no seams in it at all. But then once I had that plywood sheet, 
you know, it's like the most stressful day in the shop, it feels like. Because if you mess up one cut, you've essentially screwed up the entire kind of continuous grain motif or continuous grain concept. So this is always just a super stressful day. You've got this entire sheet of wood and you got to slice and dice it precisely and you can't mess up. So these drawer fronts, I'll show you, this will end up becoming continuous grain as well. But if you look at the way this glued on portion is done, if you look at that, there is no gap here. We come across this thin part, no gap here. This is all one portion. And then we have the same thing along the floor here. We've got no gap and no gap. This is all one piece. The part that has been glued to this cabinet, that is just all one piece of wood. And that is a very tricky cut to make, especially when you consider that, you know, you're gonna be shooting for about 3 30 seconds of an inch as like a clearance between each drawer front. And when you've got two drawers here and a door, you've got more of those combined 3 30 seconds there, then you've got just one drawer here. So to keep all that aligned, here is how I do it. Now, if you have a CNC, um, this would probably be pretty easy. But for me, you know, I do still enjoy the process of just like actually physically making all these cuts, kind of getting to work with my materials. So if I had to do this on a large production scale, a CNC would probably be a good way to go. But for me, each of my projects is just 100% custom. And I still just really do enjoy that satisfaction of like, you know, actually like using my own tools, using my own skills to build this. So is this a stressful and kind of monotonous process? Yes, but I do get a lot of pleasure out of it, just, you know, being able to be in the shop and build stuff. All right, and this is the sheet of plywood that I was talking about that I've essentially made. Um, I've started sanding just a little bit over here, so you see that kind of gets sort of that, some of those gold tones, but when the finish gets reapplied, that comes back. But yeah, I've got these dark stripes through it. Um, and one of the first things I gotta do is actually clean up some of these things. I've got some tear out in this, essentially, when the glue was applied, you know, wood likes to expand. So it actually expanded and kind of bubbled this up. And as a reason, I didn't, as a result, I didn't get good adhesion in a few spots here. So I got to go back through and fill that in, but that's kind of cosmetic. And, um, you know, if you, it's going to look a little different, but unless you're like down on your knees in the van staring at this, I think I'll be able to blend it pretty well. And then my one word of advice is before I cut any of the centerpieces, I'm going to sand it to what I would call like very close to finished. After this will be done, I'll have just like skinny little pieces here and then I'll have big squares and it's much harder to get a nice even sand job on you know 10 individual little pieces than one just kind of big sheet. So the first step I'm going to do is to just sand this all so it's close to ready, get all these little gaps fixed and then I'm going to come back through and slice and dice this thing into the shape I need. So to fill the holes in the black stripes I use a combination of just little strips of the actual veneer as well as some black CA or super glue and some clear CA glue. Again, it's not perfect, but I think it will blend just fine, especially once you get the finish over the top of it so it all has a nice and even sheen. And then it's just time to do some sanding. What you see me doing here with the pencil is I'm essentially just making marks all over the sheet. And then that way, as I'm going through and sanding, I can tell that I haven't you know, missed some spots by essentially not getting those pencil marks off. And I also started an extremely high grit, probably 150, if not 180. I just think with these kind of one of a kind veneered sheets, you want to just minimize the chance that you're going to accidentally blow through that outer veneer and have some glue showing. So by starting with a really high grit, I essentially am not afraid that I'm going to dig in a little too deep in one spot and end up blowing through that outer face. And then it's time to draw out where I'll be making the cuts. Now for this project, I essentially have to be within a 30 second of an inch of where I want my final cuts to be. So there's quite a bit of precision to these lines. It works easiest for this project to actually flip the sheet over, put the cabinet on top of it, and just make some reference marks by actually tracing the cabinet where I need to cut. After that's done, I'll add a few more lines for things like drawer dividers and such that I can't get from the actual cabinet carcass, but eventually it's all marked and then it's time to actually make the cuts with the router. And this is kind of a unique portion of this. So the key will be essentially is we're gonna be creating a track for the router to travel through. And what's gonna kind of reference the router in that track is using some of these guide bushings. So as you see, it's got a little dimple sticking out here. So that track that's being created out of those two wood pieces is just a hair wider than the outside width of this so you can just travel the router back and forth. 
And the bit I use is this kind of sketchy looking, it's essentially a matchstick. If it pokes out there, you'll see. It's a 1 16th of an inch bit. And I just take really light passes. It takes several passes to get the full like depth of the thing. If I'm a little bit off, as I was saying earlier, I shoot for a 3 30 seconds gap between each drawer front and all my panels. So by cutting this at a 16th of an inch with the router, if I've got to go back and adjust something afterwards, you know, I've got a little like, I, got, well, I have a 30 second of an inch to play with if I'm a little off. So anyways, that's what I like to use is a guide bushing on a plunge router and just take a bunch of very time consuming but light passes with one of these bits and I will warn you, wear eye protection. I mean, this thing's about the same thickness as a matchstick and uh, it's about to be spinning at over 20,000 RPMs uh, to make these cuts. So this is how I found to make continuous grain panels. It's a very time consuming process. You're essentially doing what a CNC would do, but I'm not a CNC. Um, or, or I'm, I don't have a CNC, but I'm trying to do what one does to get just perfect grain match across the front. So this time-lapse footage here, it's from well over an hour that I spent making this cutout. The little spacer blocks I use to keep the track the right width, I also use them as end stops so I don't cut too far when I'm using the plunge router. And eventually I make my last cut and then with the help of a handsaw, the center piece is free and then I can work on gluing this outer piece to the cabinet. After I've cut out this inner portion that will become the doors and the drawer fronts, it's time to get this thing glued onto the cabinet. It's a little sketchy transferring this thing over because if you do kind of tweak it kind of hard, you could break one of these thin little plywood members. But by leaving the edges overhanging, um, this isn't as bad as just the little three quarter inch strips I, will, I would be dealing with. Next morning, I remove all my clamps and then just quickly with a flush trim router bit, I can just go around the outside and trim all the outsides perfectly flush with the cabinet. And then before I can paint this thing, I've just got to do a few more tasks, like cut out these holes for little storage cubbies, as well as make a little hole for my foot pump. One thing I've become aware of is templates are the key to nice and uniform looking parts in a cabinet. Even for this foot pump, just to get a nice and consistent curve across the top of that little hole, I ended up having to make my own little template so I could get that nice curve across the top. These access holes for the cubbies in the back, I'm using a straight edge and a corner circle piece that I've demonstrated in one of my other videos. But even though this is way more tedious and time consuming than just using maybe a jigsaw, I think it just gives as close to a perfect result as you can get. And now all that's left is cutting up that inside part. For one portion of it, I will use that router trick again, just to not have too much of a gap. And then the rest of it, I just went ahead and cut apart using a thin curved blade on the table saw. This is what the finished product is gonna look like. As you can see, I've got a little bit of curvature in this panel, and it seems that the worst piece of it is actually the door on the left. This is a little troubling to me. I'm gonna to have to do a little experimentation and a little bit of a thought process on how to get this thing to be straight. I would like to do something other than just glue a big plywood frame to it because in this cabinet I have plans to keep a couple trash bins so I can't lose too much depth in it. Anyways, that's for a different video, but that's something I'll have some fun time scratching my head and trying to figure out. And that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching kind of my process for uh, getting these cabinets built. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching as always. Thank you.